This time around, it's the Eritrean who knows the wheel he wants, and he's got himself a spot directly behind Navarez. Exactly, and you see the teams really fighting for the side of the road, because if you pick one side of the road, it's much easier to hold position. You don't have teams making that washing machine effect, as we see Israel coming through the center here with Derek G on the front. Look at the face and the twitching here in the red helmet. He's moved across to grab the next wheel of Bevan there. That's Navarez. He's trying to get up the climb now. This is it. Premier Trek delivering there, men. And it's George Bennett in second spot. The Kiwi climber, they want to blunt in the speed of the sprinters. Exactly. George has just come across as a new signing this year. And he's... he's starting to step off the wheel here. Jared G is some of the guys are struggling to hold the wheel. And I do think that's Cal O'Brien there from uh, Jayco. This is Cal O'Brien, followed by Archie Ryan. Narvaez is there. Corbin Strong is still holding strong. Exactly. Was... Cor Corbin's just there behind Archie. So we should see how long these sort of sprinters that are on the edge can last in this climb. Oh, it's the uh, Kiwis that are doing all the damage. We've got a New Zealander at the front. This working for his Kiwi sprinter, Corbin Strong. And another New Zealander, Lawrence Pithy has kept himself right in the hunt for the win. Another 400 metres, and the sprinters will become the stars of the race, I think, if they don't crack them now. And you see there, Nick Schultz also coming up there to help a young Australian who's also been on Israel now maybe two years. He's really to the front. Cal O'Brien in second spot is holding desperately onto the wheel. You see there, Luke Clapp in the background as well, still suffering. Narvaez is in fourth spot. Now the splits, the Arnie number 57, Ooh. can he hold on? Gritting his teeth here, the only winner, previous winner in this race. Now the most important thing will be to carry the momentum. Here goes Platt, the Australian National Road Champion. He is on the charge. Well, hats off to Lucas Platt. He is so badly injured on his back, he's got no skin on it from the crash in the tour down under. The legs are hurting now, though, as he comes up to the summit shoulder. Navarez is the star on the right. Who is there for Astana? Plap is across the top in fourth. Lawrence Pithy in the blue colours, followed then by the American national champion. I think this is Stevie Williams just now, who just got to the front as uh, Corbin Strong gets a bottle here, just with nine Ks to go. Perfect right. for Israel. They took full responsibility early for the race. Now, they want to keep the pressure on now. They've done the damage. They've cracked a lot of riders. They've got to keep the pressure on. Otherwise, they'll be back before the finish. The biggest group we've ever seen come to the finish line in the Get 11th Great Ocean Road Race was last year with 25 riders contesting the sprint. It was won by Marius Mayhofer. To go, the Australian time trial champion is on the move. He has made a gear selection with a 56 tooth chain ring on for this moment. They're after him, but four kilometres out, take your hat off to this man. Following that high-speed crash in the Santos Tour down under, which took him out of the race, buried beneath a pile of riders, many of them in this race right now in the front. Very dangerous moment in the race, especially for the sprinters who don't want to follow any of these attacks of the opportunistic riders. Having his dig a long way out, three and a half kilometres to go for the champion of the USA. Archie is trying to catch him up. Archie Ryan there. One national champion attacks, it's another one who counter-attacks, it's the Stars and Stripes. Exactly, now you see Archie, he's really suffering it on the wheel here, he did the big attack at the top of the previous climb. Flappy also pulled off to the, the left there, because he'd just been off the front, so it's a really good move by Quinn. Now it's really important for Archie to get on the wheel here and get the slipstream. And the responsibility for the chase, again, falls on the shoulders of Israel Premier Tech, with Steve Williams to do the job for Corbin Strong. Absolutely, now you see here, Archie is really suffering, it'll look so so close there, the Queen's just 10 metres in front, but he's not quite on the wheel, so he's not getting any advantage there. He's pushing the same wind as Quinn. He's got a really good gap now. My goodness me, Archie Ryan surprising me with him trying to cross this gap. Slightly built rider Simmons, we expect the power of this man. Checking on the gap, we're heading towards 2.8, we'll soon be swinging right onto the finishing straight. I wonder if Quinn Simmons has stolen this race. Oh, it's great to see him back. He said he was on the brink of retiring from the sport, just 22 years of age last year at the Tour de Suisse in the tragedy when Gino Madère crashed 
and sadly passed away. Simmons was one of the first on the scene. It took him a long time to get over the scars, to get back to racing, and he's back in a big way. And there he is, right in the distance now. As we go over this little rise, must feel like a mountain now. As he kicks out the saddle, about in the right turn onto the Esplanade. Archie Ryan has dropped back into the tail of the pack there. You see that pink jersey. You have there Ineos on the front there with Lawrence Dupuis helping the Israel in back here, but it's going to be really hard because it's quite fast now all the way to the finish. You can go into this roundabout, turn right, a slight uphill, and they're really going to need to punch it on this slight uphill before you get to the one kilometre to go. The former junior world champion he is yet to win a world tour race. And it is desperately close. The man affectionately known as Dupluski is bad news for Quinn Simmons. Lawrence Dupluski doing the chasing for Jonathan Narvaez. Exactly, and then I think just behind him you got Stevie Williams there just to do the last pull to hopefully close that gap for Corbin Strong. But Corbin's quite close to the front here. He needs to be quite careful he's not taking too much wind. He is. He's up in a second spot. Lawrence Petey was on his wheel as well. Danger man. It's going to be the longest uh, 1.7 kilometers in the life of the USA champion. And uh, we've lost Lawrence there from the front. He's done his final pull, so it's looking a little bit better here for Queens. There's not very many guys with teammates in this group behind here, so it's going to be up to Stevie Williams and maybe some late attacks to try and bridge the gap as Platt is there suffering there. Well, Platt is trying to close the gap, but Kello Brian, who's behind him, they know each other so well from team pursuiting on the track, and now Platt has to bring O'Brien around the outside and get into the front. Absolutely now, as we see, is this Stevie Williams going off the front? Yes. It looks like, it looks like Corbin Strong wanted to drift back into the peloton. He left the gap go, and now Stevie's about to bridge across. Winning form is good form. He's closing in on Quinn Simmons, being chased by Luke Plapp. Inside at the kilometre, 900 metres to go, and the winner of the Santos Tour Down Under is in the mix again as he just comes up on the back wheel of the national champion USA. Williams has caught Quinn Simmons, and now Mollema goes for the lead out trek team. He opens up, Kelvin responds. He's trying to get into the wheel of the experienced Dutchman. Corbin Strong is waiting, Tesfatsion is in fourth spot, and Narvaez is breathing down his neck. Scaroni is fighting for the wheel. Cal O'Brien opens up the sprint, but he's too early. He starts to fade. It's Tesfatsion coming over the top. Pithy with the charge through the middle. Tesfatsion trying to hold on. It is a photo finish. With